Greetings, Earthlings. Um, so we're going to do a little video here on how to change the carburetor on a Honda engine. And this is a procedure that is the same on virtually all the GX series horizontal shaft Honda engines, GX160 through 390. This one happens to be a 340. Um, the procedure is extremely similar on all modern engines, all Kohler Command engines, the Yamaha engines, uh, Subaru Robin. But anyway, we'll get going on this. For this Honda engine, what I'm going to need is a 10 millimeter ratchet. Uh, a wrench works, but the ratchet is more convenient. Um, and a long nose pliers. I think those are the only two tools I'll need. We'll see here by the end. So, first thing I'm going to do is remove my air cleaner cap. Get the air cleaner off the, off the thing, because that has to go out of the way. Now this is of course a brand new engine. Your engine is going to be all scuzzy and nasty, um, but that's okay. Everything's still in the same places. Take that off. Make sure not to lose the little air cleaner seal. That can just stay on here. That rubber seal seals the air cleaner against this thing. If that gets lost, the air filter doesn't do much good. So you've got this air filter elbow that has to come out of the way. I'll take off these two 10 millimeter nuts here. With my handy little ratchet. Put those where I'll be sure to lose them later. No, I'm just kidding. Then there's just one more mounting bolt on the back here holding this elbow in place. Again, 10 millimeter. Not complicated. Also throw this in the corner. No, we'll save that. Now this thing is loose. There is a breather tube on most of these engines that is connected on the back of the elbow down into the valve cover. Get this thing out of the way. Uh, so we can just pop that off of there and then this thing slides off. If we're careful, we won't tear the gasket in here. So I'll just wiggle that around carefully. Let me uh, look at the other side here to see why it's... Oh. Yeah, it's not coming off because I forgot to turn the fuel shutoff to the off position. This fuel shutoff lever has to be swung to off so it actually clears the little door here. If it's over here in the on position, it hits. So fuel shutoff to off. There's that. We didn't tear the gasket. Take this thing off. Actually, that's a little metal piece. It's, uh, yeah, the older, the older ones have a paper gasket. This actually has a metal piece that's impregnated with rubber, which is better. Set that aside. Now our carburetor is just kind of loose on there. The air horn is all that was holding the carburetor on. Uh, now there's there's a little spring here. This is this is what we call the anti-chatter spring. It keeps it, it all it does is keep the thing from it keeps this linkage rod from vibrating around while the engine's running because that would cause ir, kind of erratic running. So it's just the, the link of the anti-chatter spring is hooked to this end and it's also hooked to this end of the governor arm. And it's just putting a little bit of tension, kind of squeezing in on that linkage to take the chatter or vibration out of there. This is what we need our long nose pliers for is to unhook that carefully because we don't want to deform the spring. So there's that, it just stays on that linkage rod. Now, uh, on most Honda engines, you can you can slide this oh one more thing i should also mention that before we before we're going to remove the carburetor and disconnect the fuel line i'm going to come down here if this was an engine that actually was a running engine this one's brand new it's never been started i would want to drain the fuel that's in the carb before pulling it off because if you pull off the carb and accidentally tip it over on the side it'll spill the fuel that's in it on your hands so this is the drain bolt right here this bottom bolt is the bolt that holds this bowl onto the carburetor. This one on this angled surface is the drain bolt. So if you loosen this up, if there was any gas in there, it would drain out. And then you would retighten this. Uh, but anyway, so we'll pretend we've already done that. The other thing is there's a fuel line coming from the fuel tank and it's secured right here by the fuel shutoff assembly by this little clamp. The clamp, you just take your long nose pliers and compress the two ends of the clamp together slide it up the hose and then kind of you can wiggle this around a little bit to loosen the fuel line up and then uh, usually just put your long nose pliers down here and kind of tweak that thing off of there there it comes right there so we're disconnected now if there were fuel in the tank the tank would it, it would just start to run out because the fuel shutoff as we can see is attached to the carburetor so when you would pull off this end of the fuel line 
fuel is just going to start running out of here if there's any fuel in the tank. So you can take a little vice grips or a clamp or something and clamp this off or just drain your fuel into a into a drain pan or something like that if you want to save the fuel make sure it's clear you know, or clean like a mason jar. But a little uh, hemostat clamp or a vice grips you can clamp on that thing or even bend it over on itself and put a clothespin on it or something like that. So there's lots of different ways to stop that. So we're going to slide this out and again this is a pretty new engine well it's brand new engine so the gasket was not stuck back here the gasket is actually staying with the carburetor usually you can tease these gaskets off and have them stay with the engine which i'm going to try to do here yes okay that car the gasket came off nice and clean if you tear the gasket you just have to get a new one um, and this to get this governor linkage unhooked you just orient this thing and now the carb is off oriented so this so the rod is straight with this opening and it just lifts right out that's all there is to it so this is the old car it's no good right because we're replacing the car now we've got a new car uh same car actually this little choke lever which i dropped when i did my little magic trick there uh, just sits on top of the carburetor and it can be reused it sits on this little peg on the honda engines and you got to make sure this little there's a little roll pin sticking out the bottom here that roll pin drops into that slot when you put it on so just like that and that opens and closes the choke on the front so now we're ready to put this back on because we've got our new carburetor drop that all the way down into the hole why isn't it going into the hole i'm blind oh there it goes all right Get this thing slid on there. Our gasket is in place. Make sure the gasket, uh, if you do take the gasket off, make sure the orientation is correct. The hole should be in the upper corner here. Okay, get that slid all the way back on there. Get our anti-chatter spring hooked back up. Just goes in this little hole. Urgh. Stay in place, you. My long inch pliers has a screwed up jaw, so it doesn't want to grab that spring too well. Come on. There it is. Okay, it's hooked back up. Okay, good. And then we put our fuel line back on. Shove it all the way down. Recompress the clamp with the pliers slide it all the way down on there right that's good and we put this thing back on this is oriented so that the hole lines up with the hole in the carburetor as you can see and then put this back on the fuel shut off is off so it should slide through the hole here oh my choke is in the wrong position gotta have the choke that way too Everything's got to come through the hole. There we go. Hook up my vent tube back on the back here. Crankcase rebreather right there. So that's just secure. Make sure no dirt gets inside of it because your danger engine is going to be all dirty. Get this bolt started back in the top. Get the two started on the front. And you definitely want to, you get this bolt on the top started, but you tighten these bolts on the front first because you want those gaskets to be fully compressed by, this, by these two bolts here so you get a nice seal on both ends of the gasket before you tighten the top bolt. If you tighten this one down and you haven't tightened these, it may kind of, this may be in the wrong position. It kind of cocks the air horn and doesn't fully compress the gasket. So, uh, you know, this is just a plastic housing, so it doesn't have, you don't have to get out the crowbar or anything, just good and snug. You know, I don't know what the foot-pounds of torque are, I don't think they even rate the foot-pounds of torque on those things, but, you know, if I'm moving the engine, that's, that's enough. If I'm, yeah, if I'm moving the engine a little bit, that, that's good enough for it. Alright, drop this back on. Got a little location tab here that goes down on here. Good. Our little gasket was still in place, so that's good. All right. 
We have an air filter servicing video on our website on the Air Tools uh, YouTube channel. You can watch that on how to properly maintain these two stage air cleaners. Two stage meaning it's foam outside and paper on the inside. Those two require uh, some oiling and that proper maintenance. Drop the lid back on. And we're good to go. Turn on, pour fuel on it, turn on your fuel, of course it's choked, bang, the engine starts. And you're back in business. Thanks for watching.